إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق نذيرًا وبشيرًا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعص الله ورسوله فلن يضر إلا نفسه ولن يضر الله شيئا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters Inshallah this week in Saturday in particular we will be commemorating the new Hijri year a new Islamic year in the Islamic calendar in fact the year 1436 1436 years since the migration of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Mecca to Medina. And I want to stop and reflect a little bit on the migration of the Prophet and migration in general as a theme in Islam and for us as Muslims in America. It's interesting how the fact that the beginning of the new year was selected by the companions during the time of Umar radiallahu anhu after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed away that the hijrah, the migration of the Prophet was selected to be the beginning year one of uh, the Muslim calendar. And it's interesting that the Muslims considered many other occasions to initiate or to start the Muslim calendar or the Muslim year, including the birth of the Prophet وسلم, including uh, making it the first day the Quran was revealed and other options. But the consensus was to use the beginning of the new year being the migration from Mecca to Medina. As if it's a message to be sent to us later generations in Muslims regarding how important that occasion was and how momentous the occasion of migration was for Islam. The Prophet ﷺ migrated with the Muslims from Mecca to Medina in order to send a very important message that Islam is beyond any tribe or any city or any uh, nation or any particular place. Before that, the Muslims also migrated from Mecca to Al-Habasha or current day Ethiopia in order to take their religion in other places. The migration was very central in having a new beginning for Islam in a new city that did not know Islam before but was welcoming of Islam and Muslims. The migration extended the Muslim community to allow them to learn new things and to grow in other directions and to deal with other people and to learn from other experiences. In Medina, the Muslims came in touch with many other communities that they had not done before in, uh, in Mecca. It's also very interesting how the Prophet's migration from Mecca to Medina was not temporary because we all know how much the Prophet وسلم, loved Mecca. We also know how much better Mecca is compared to any other city, including Medina. This is where the Prophet ﷺ was born. This is where he received the first revelation. This is where he loved and where he grew up until the age of 50. But then when he went to Medina, he had another chance to go back to Mecca after Mecca accepted Islam. Ten years after migration, all of Mecca accepted Islam. And they wanted the Prophet to come back. But the Prophet وسلم, as if teaching us a lesson about leaving our homes and about migration, he said, I will continue the rest of my life and I will die where I took Islam 
to the furthest. And the Prophet وسلم, is buried in Medina. Even though we know that the Haram in Mecca, the prayer there is a hundred thousand times more than in any other place around the world. Teaching us the great lesson of migration and taking Islam and taking our lives beyond just where we initiated ourselves or where we were first born. And in fact, that is the message of migration and immigrating to faraway lands that the Muslims and the companions who were raised on the hands of the Prophet وسلم, took to heart. After the Prophet وسلم, all the companions, they wanted to live and die the furthest away from Mecca and Medina. Even though we know how holy Mecca and Medina are because that is their contribution to live and mingle and show Islam in real life and real way to many other people in faraway lands. It got to the point that Umar ibn al-Khattab, when he was Khalifa, he felt that all the companions that the Prophet raised on his own hands, they were not with him in Medina anymore and he needed some of them to consult with. So he made a directive that no one from the companions should immigrate anywhere else without his explicit permission. And if you look at the names of the companions and where they died, they died far away from Mecca and Medina. In fact, their home was where Islam was not. Their home was where, where Islam was not because they saw it as a life duty to live amongst other people who have not seen Islam, live a fully Muslim life in order to take Islam to others. That is the importance of migration. And that is how this type of immigration stuck with the companions and stayed on for Muslims afterwards for generations. In fact, immigration and migration is very close to our American Muslim community. Still the majority, maybe two thirds of our community are either immigrants or the children of immigrants. Many of us came from many countries far and wide. And this is one of the beautiful aspects of the US that Muslims don't experience except maybe in Hajj where we meet people from all over the world. But many of us came to America initially. A lot of people came initially just to seek a better life, whether in education or work or financial or otherwise. But it's amazing how many people found Islam and became more committed to Islam in America. This will resonate, I know it will resonate with many people around here. And we know the turmoil that is in many Muslim countries and we know how important it is the freedom that we have here, not only to practice our religion, but more to build our institutions, to take Islam as far as our own energy and our own aspirations will take us. And that's a beautiful story. In fact, that story is also part of my own journey. I came to the US when I was a little bit less than 12 years old. I came from Egypt and I was living a life in Egypt within more or less high class society going to French schools. When I look at many of my friends that I grew up with in Egypt right now and they grew up, I see that they are not where they ought to be in terms of their understanding and commitment to Islam. I found Islam in America. I found my commitment to my faith in America. And I know that this is the story of many of us. Because when we are challenged and when a good thing is not available for us, then we recognize how important it is. And we struggle for it more and we want to understand it more and commit to it more. Many Muslims I know find their Islam in America. That's why when many people convert to Islam and it's a beautiful thing, and sometimes the first impression that comes to their mind is, I wanna go overseas to learn about Islam. And I wanna tell them, slow down, because there is a lot that you can learn about Islam here. 
because we don't learn about Islam just from books. We learn from Islam mostly from the struggles that we go through in order to incorporate Islam in our life and in order to share Islam with others. That is how we truly learn and are able to practice Islam. I want to share with you another story that I was really inspired with of a young man who grew up in our community here in Boston in Malden. His name is Omar. He was born in Malden of Yemeni uh, parents. And one of the beautiful things that his parents taught him is to be confident and proud of his Islam from a young age. Omar went to public schools in Malden. And from an early age, his parents arranged for him in a positive way every year in whatever social studies or history class they have, that he would make some demonstration or lecture about Islam to his friends. So from a very young age, Omar got really used to people seeing him as Muslims and him sharing Islam with other people. And that was from first grade. When he was in third grade, uh, Omar's family, his mother, went back to Yemen for three years. These years were the years when 9-11 happened. And then Omar came back to the U.S. three years later after 9-11 had happened. And Omar, because of the fact that he had a connection with his friends, because he was a good person, because his parents taught him to be a good person and to be proud of himself as a Muslim and to share Islam with other people, he found that his friends who were not Muslims in his class for a long time after he left would save him a seat in their lunch table waiting for him to come back because they didn't know where he went. And they were very happy when he came back. And even though he came at the very critical time that many of us knew after 9-11, his friends were very close to him because they knew him. And they knew Islam through him. And so they were very supportive of him. And he did not get any discrimination from his class or his friends. In fact, if anyone else in the school outside the class would discriminate or say anything bad about him or about Islam, his friends would defend him, who are not Muslims. Omar took that with him and it made him who he is today. Today, Omar is a third year bachelor student in Harvard University studying political science. And insha'Allah, he will have a great history, a great story, insha'Allah, a great future. This is part of the immigrant story for the American Muslim community. And yes, there are or there may be discrimination, but that's part of what Islam teaches us not to focus on the discrimination, but to focus on what we can do to do well to the people around us. When the Prophet وسلم, and the Muslims were discriminated against and there was Islamophobia at the time of the Prophet وسلم, the Quran was not overwhelmed about the protection of the community or Islamophobia, but the focus was what should Muslims do in order to be good and to take Islam to other people. And in fact, immigration and migration is also the story of America. That is one of the central theme to the American story. America is made of immigrants. Many people, Irish, Catholics, Italians, from so many places all over the world, immigrated to America. America is a very young country. And immigrants are generally welcome in America. Not without some tough time, but that tough time can easily be overcome if we stay together and we stay committed to our faith and we stay on our goal and not be dist distracted by Islamophobia. Many people came to America from so many places around the world. And they came originally, a very large group of them, in search of religious freedom. It's interesting that America, a, lot, a very big part of America was built on protecting the religious freedoms of minority. And in fact, the separation of church and state in America, maybe unlike Europe and unlike other places, a big part of it 
was due to wanting to protect religion from the state so that the state does not interfere in the religion and maybe corrupt it or move it one way or the other. So that every religion has its own ability to grow as it pleases without discrimination from the government. And that's a very beautiful concept. This is the story of America and the story that brings us today and puts that common theme of immigration and migration from the new year all the way to where we are today. What I want to leave you with is for us to think about what is our goal? We will stay here in Boston, in America for whatever number of years. What is our vision for our contribution? Individually and as a community. We have to put that, we have to think about that so that we can make a dent like the Muslims before us have made a contribution to the societies that they were a part of. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وخاتم نبينا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Many of you have seen Imam Suhaib's email that went out to the community this morning regarding him leaving Boston and having another opportunity in Washington that he will be pursuing إن شاء الله. And I'd like to share with you some thoughts and reflections on uh, this point, inshallah. But first, before I do that, I want to read Imam Suhaib's letter for you that he uh, sent out uh, this morning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm writing you today with a heart heavy with emotions. I want to share with you the news that on January 1st, I will be transitioning from Boston to an opportunity that will allow me to take the spirit of the ISBCC to another community and to further contribute to Islam in America. My time in Boston has been one of the most memorable in my life. Together, we have weathered the Boston Marathon bombing. We have implemented programs around relevant but often taboo topics like mental health or domestic violence. We have shown to our youth how Islam is relevant to their lives, and we have turned the ISPCC into an open and welcoming space, a true place to build one's spirituality and community. I'm grateful to God for what we have been able to accomplish. I am also grateful to God for how much you, Boston, have given me. Through the marathon bombing, I learned how to stay strong in the midst of crisis and to speak to the nation. Through our community's diversity, I learned to become a leader who listens and appreciates difference and context. Through my interactions with young people, I tasted the thirst for Islamic knowledge, communicated in ways relevant to our times. In short, Boston has made me wiser and I pray a much better leader. Boston is near and dear to my heart and will always be. Transitions are sadly part of life. But it is through change that growth happens. The ISBCC has a bright future ahead of it, and I pray that I too have a bright future in the service of Allah. In the coming weeks, the organization I will join will announce my new role, and I will keep you updated, inshallah. I ask you all to pray for my family and me, to pray for the ISBCC, and to pray for Islam in America. We have major challenges ahead of us as a community, and together, with God's help, we must tackle them. While I will, inshallah, be coming back to the ISBCC from time to time, please know that my heart will always be with you, your dear brother, Imam Soheb Webb. This is, of course, uh, something that is very dear to our community because how much we love Imam Soheb Webb. Imam Soheb Webb is in DC today. He would have himself made the announcement. He will be with us in Boston on Monday and for the next two months, inshallah, until January. And we will all have a chance to talk to him and to uh, come close to him and ask him all the questions that we have. But inshallah, today in DC, the organization that he will be joining will be making the announcement. And he had to be there in DC today. This is why he's not with us today. But inshallah, we are going to pray for him. Imam Suhib Webb 
has been a teacher and a friend to many of us, and he has been a leader to many Muslims outside the ISBCC. I have had the pleasure and the honor personally to, to know Imam Suhaib for a very, very long time. From the time that he was studying in Egypt, and his story is a beautiful story of someone who found Islam as a young American, and who took Islam personally, who was very passionate about Islam, who loved Islam, who committed to Islam, who spent many, many years in very hard studies in Egypt until he achieved a very honorable place amongst the scholars. And he came with a beautiful vision that uh, communicates Islam in America and communicates with the youth. And he is a wonderful person that uh, uh, we will lose here in Boston. But at the same time, there is a better opportunity, and we in the board have discussed this with him for a long time, that there are other opportunities, and he is ready to move to a stage where he's not only contributing to one community, but contributing to many communities around the nation. This new opportunity will give him a chance to travel on a regular basis so that it is not only in one state or one community that is benefiting from his knowledge, but there are many others around the nation who are benefiting from his knowledge. It will also give him an opportunity to be in D.C. where a lot of the key decisions are made so that he can contribute even more to Islam in America. So even though we are sad to see him leave, we are happy to see the growth and the better opportunity that our institution here in Boston has opened up for him. We have had many leaders. Boston is a very transient place, and many of you who've been here in Boston for many years have known many leaders, in fact, Muslims and non-Muslims, who have uh, came in the city, who have contributed and made a contribution to our city, and also took from the passion and the youthfulness and the energy that Boston has, and then went out in order to take that message across America. So we are praying for Imam Suhaib. We are happy for him. We know that he is our Imam and a friend of the institution and that he will always be with us in our hearts as well in person when his time allows. We've also known and we've spoken a little bit about migration that this is a theme amongst the scholars. Many of the scholars of Islam have traveled far and wide and did not just stay in one place. We know Imam Bukhari whose book is authentic only second after the Quran. And he had traveled far and wide in order to learn and in order to give back. Imam Shafi'i, many of the other Imams have traveled all over and we are proud of what Imam Sahib has done. We are proud of what he has given us in Boston and proud of what he will do inshallah in order to contribute to Islam in America. Imam Sahib also had, none, of course all of you know that he had a difficult time in Boston with all the attacks that were against him. And we are accustomed, accustomed, unfortunately, with the attacks from Islamophobes in our institution. In fact, any individual or any institution in America today that tries to do good things and great things in America is attacked by a very small but well-funded group of Islamophobes. And these attacks are hard on the individual. They are not easy because when you see your reputation smeared, when you see your picture in the newspaper in front of terrorists or with terrorists, these are not easy things to withstand. And we are grateful for Imam Suhaib that on our behalf, he withstood many of these attacks and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us all the courage to support our scholars and our leaders and our institutions and be with them in these times of difficulties. At the end, I want to say that this work that we are doing, the ISBCC and other work, this is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This work does not belong to any one person, but this is Allah's work. And Allah will take care of it, and Allah will give us all, and Allah will help us once we have the right intention, and once we have a good intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us. The main question that I leave you with is, what have we contributed within our own sphere? We know what Imam Suhaib has contributed, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask each one of us in the day of judgment, what have we done? 
What have we done in order to make a difference in the world, make a difference in our neighborhood, make a difference in our cities, make a difference in our communities? Each one of us has a role to play. Each one of us has a contribution to make, and your job is to find it and to plug yourself in it. All of us spend energy to find where, who is the best spouse. We spend energy to find what is the best career. We spend energy to find what is the best job. We have to spend some energy to find where should we be contributing for our community as being Muslims. That is the question that I leave you with today and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all find the answer. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, ya hayu ya qayyum, ya wahid ya ahad, ya fard ya samad, Allahumma khfil lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana, Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anna, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qulubana ala deenik, Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannata wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawl aw amal, wa na'udhu bika min al-nar wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawl aw amal. Ya Allah, we ask you by all your beautiful names to protect us. Ya Allah, we ask you to give us paradise. Ya Allah, we, we seek refuge in you from hellfire. Ya Allah, we ask you to guide us. Ya Allah, we ask you to guide our city of Boston and guide our country and guide our ummah and guide the world. Ya Allah, we ask you to use us for your sake. Ya Allah, we ask you to make America more beautiful with Islam. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us role models in our communities. Ya Allah, we ask you to help us contribute to our city and our state and our country and our ummah and the entire world. Ya Allah, we ask you to bless our dear Imam Suhib Web. Ya Allah, we ask you to use him for your sake. Ya Allah, we ask you to give him more wisdom and strength and courage. Ya Allah, we ask you to bless his life and his family. Ya Allah, we ask you to increase him in knowledge. Ya Allah, we ask you to take care of him. Ya Allah, we ask you to give him more sincerity. Ya Allah, we ask you to use him for your sake. Ya Allah, we ask you to bless him wherever he goes. Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, Ya Rabb Al Alameen. We have many brothers and sisters who have challenges. All of us have challenges. Help us solve our challenges. Ya Allah, come, come to our aid. We cannot do it without you. We cannot do anything without you. We need you, Ya Rabb Al Alameen. We need you, Ya Allah. We ask you to come to our aid. We ask you to help our institutions. We ask you to help us in our struggles. We ask you to heal the sick amongst us. We ask you to educate the ones who are seeking education. We ask you to help the ones who are looking to find spouse to find a spouse. We ask you to give knowledge and wisdom to those who are seeking it. Ya Rabb al Alameen, we ask you as you have asked us to do, so give us as you have promised. Allahumma khfil lil mu'minina wal mu'minat, al ahya'i minhum wal amwat, wa sallillahumma ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ameen bi rahmatika ya arham al rahimin wa aqim al salah. Allahu Akbar.